excuse my hair. <laughs> Today, today I challenge you. The task may not end today. The task may end five to ten years from now. But I challenge you. I challenge you. The marathon continues, right? I challenge you with the marathon continues, all right? And what I mean by that is I don't want to put no... No name calling on it. I don't want to say, let's do the Nipsey challenge. I just want to challenge you. I want to challenge you as a black person. I challenge you to create any business, whether it's making buttons, making zippers, pumpkin pie. I challenge you to build or create a business within America, but without Americans. Let me understand, let me understand that for y'all. What I mean is within America, but not with the financial help of Europeans. OK, so what I'm saying is let's do that hip hop shit that we did when we was little kids. When we was little kids, we started creating breakdance and beatboxing and shit like that. Right. You can do the same thing. You can create a job right now in your house. And it can grow within three to five years. To where you have your own storefront. Why don't you have that much power to put into your own work? You so busy going to get the bag from another motherfucker instead of creating your own fucking bag. Then when you ain't got no bag, then you want to sit around there talking about a motherfucker's a deadbeat. Ain't nobody gave you nothing and no shit like that. Why don't you go out there and get it yourself? Create a job within America, but without Americans. We too busy want to be so much like white people. Hey, beautiful. How you doing, baby? How you doing? Good morrow. But this is what I, that's the challenge I want to do for everybody. I want y'all to go out and create a job. Even if it's just your children, you got your children creating a job. If they lawn mowing, picking up snow, picking up shit, whatever the fuck it is, man. I challenge you because what that does, it start growing in the community. We have not learned how to, to be businessmen, businesswomen. We so busy trying to go, go get something from somebody else. We always thinking that black ice ain't good as white ice. The shit still cold and the shit goddamn me. Uh, <laughs> it still does what is frozen. <laughs> ice is ice, no matter it's white or black. But we live in this concept of thinking that, you know what, I can't do this. I can't do that. One thing that Nipsey brother said that really touched me and my wife, that when he when they got their store and had the opportunity to get their store, they lied because the LAPD didn't want them to have it. They wanted the, they, the district attorney wanted to force them out of their place. And basically, they was putting a pressure on Nipsey's uh, renter. You know, the person who was renting to him and the person came to him and said, you know what, man, we don't want y'all to do none of this. You don't want y'all to leave. We want y'all to actually uh, stay here. So, you know what? Are you willing or do you have the money to 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 buy the property? Now, me and my wife, we was in the same situation. We didn't have the money to buy that damn restaurant. And all of a sudden, goddamn me, the shit happened. Being a good motherfucker. Being a good motherfucker. And it just happened. We didn't know how we was going to do it, but we did it. And it's three yeah, years. Know. Yeah. It. It's three years. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine a person who I wanted to franchise this restaurant or two, right? Somebody killed him. Somebody murdered the boy. The only motherfucker that I would have did that shit. Because I actually know the motherfuckers about his business. Then to come to farm laid out, that's, he's a Leo. So well, that's why, vegans yeah, and vegan and all that shit. Have, he probably would have still took it because you know the people wasn't gonna all be vegan. Yeah, then a Chinese restaurant in the hood, black on. Come on now, Crenshaw. Make it vegan very easy. Yeah, uh, mm, but shit, to, you turn everything into jackfruit. But to make a long story short, man, I just challenge y'all people today, and it may not be a lot of people that can uh, actually see themselves doing this, but I challenge you to do a business. I don't give a fuck what you sell. 
You can sell titty milk. If that's what you sell, goddamn me, sell that shit and be a good motherfucking sell at that shit. Sell that titty milk. But start something. You want you want people to come back to the hood after they didn't create it to create some uh, create something to create something there. And when they come back to the hood and give back to the hood, it be the lazy motherfuckers that ain't did nothing, ain't create their own avenue, haven't created their own uh, business or nothing like that and try to kill or hate on the next motherfucker. That's why black rappers or actresses and everything don't like to come back to the neighborhood. Why would I come back to a fucking neighborhood where a bunch of motherfuckers ain't doing shit? Now, let's keep it. I'm from St. Louis. Why would I come and put a Chinese restaurant? Not one nigga who seen me see what I'm trying to do. Not one nigga try to emulate that or even say, you know what? Congratulations, brother. We need some of that shit down here. You inspired me, so I opened up my own shit. You Chinese eating rice motherfucking niggas. <laughs> not one time. Not one time, buddy. You know what a motherfucker say? Hey, man, you should come down here and study Chinese rest one down here. Why would I do that so you niggas will come and shoot it up? You niggas hang all out of it and sell drugs and shit. Like, why would I do that? <coughs> In order for that to stop, you must create some shit for yourself. So why you thinking you the big drug dealer? Why you thinking you the man that's going to the clubs with the nice little clothes on so everybody else can see? Ain't nobody seeing that shit. Don't nobody care about your boots or your purse or none of that shit. Y'all worry about the dumbest shit in the world. And that's why we don't progress. You so busy worrying about the next motherfucker that ain't got shit. You don't go get shit. And that's silly. That's the dumbest shit in the world. Why would you put yourself, you so worried about your clothes. You so worried about your boots and what another other motherfucker. And you too busy not to even grow your own shit. So I challenge you. I challenge you to go out there and create your own fucking job. I challenge you create a job so it grows so good where you open up a business inside of the neighborhood. Where you go get you a corner store. You go get you a little space or some shit and you sewing your clothes and doing all that shit in there. I challenge you. See, people won't challenge you like that. Your school, your education don't challenge your children like that. You got some dumb ass kids out here. Your kids can't even write in cursive or read cursive, but you want them to be the best. You think the Lord has gave them the light in the way to doing some dumb shit and they still die on the fucking street. They still whores and not being good mothers out here on these fucking streets. But you left it up to the Lord. You left it up to Jesus. God is good. Well, if he's good, why your family so fucked up? Why your marriage is so broken? Why you ain't got shit if God is so fucking good? One bullshit ass car that you got to pay a note on. God didn't give it to you. Evidently, you working for that shit. <laughs> That's what it seemed like to me. So how the fuck God is good? See, the, all the dumb shit that black people worry about keeps them in the same fucking position that they that they are in still to this day. After 600 years, niggas still got the slave mentality. Niggas can't get out of it. Out of 60, yeah, years, 60 years. Yeah, you only had 60 years to recover from the stupidity that white put you in. And you, and you still without white people to yeah, try to recover from that. Not one day without white people. When have black people had at least one day without a hunky influencing them, killing them, shooting them, making a decision, telling them what's USDA approved, telling them what they can and can't, you know what I'm saying, where? Your, your pants are sagging. See, when you allow other people to do that to you, you can't create. You got somebody else creating for you. Matter of fact, these hunkies then gave you a God, talking about he, the God that they created created you. How stupid can you be? How you think a real man gonna wanna fuck with you when you your mindset is so fucked up? You know, I ain't never watched nobody's funeral before. <laughs> but his mom, she really said a lot of wonderful things there. Well she really was trying to put out some messages and I see where Nipsey She was got trying. She was trying to put some messages out and we can see that she's still a child in this in this she field. said she was new. She was she new said. to the field. So, but what she was trying to do is trying to give y'all some kind of culture. 
because evidently y'all don't even and know she kept y'all come tugging her African caress the caress in it. Oh yeah, we've been there <laughs> plenty of times. Caressing is very beautiful. Not enough, but we've been there. If we could go every day, it would be good. But it's that beautiful. On the other side of the town. You know, and it's in the hood. Let's keep it 100. It's in the hood. Yeah, that motherfucker's in the... 78? What's that? I remember the one. It's at 78, yeah. Yeah, 78 in, in Western. That motherfucker in the hood. Between yeah, here. 78 in Western. Getting a burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right she there. Got right shot street. across the street from that. You know. So what I'm saying is, like, it's funny how our black people continue to keep up the stupidity. It's It's so amazing how we keep on doing the same shit over and over and never try to progress. We wait on the Lord to do something to make it better. You should see some of the comments that people wrote when the brothers, I recorded, I went viral, uh, I recorded marching. And you should see some of the people that thank Jesus and God. These was men that came together to do this. God didn't have shit to do with it. God ain't have shit to do with it. Nipsey, if anything, Nipsey had more to do with it than God. How about that? But we never, we never want to sit there and put that perspective the way it's supposed to be. You don't give the right do or the just do to the people who are actually working hard and trying and making avenues for other people. Y'all will look at that person and say, no, nah, that's not good enough. That's what happened to Nipsey. The same shit how a crab-ass nigga double backed on him, double back on me. Some two-facing crab-ass niggas. A bitch-ass nigga that can't fight you straight up. When they know your power see you, goddamn it. Bitch-ass niggas don't want you for real. Niggas couldn't fight me. Niggas had to shoot me. That's how much these bitch, bitch-ass niggas out here, they had to shoot me. So with that being said, I challenge you as a black person to create, to build within America, but without Americans. Because at the end of the fucking day, you got to know all things are possible through you. Not no fucking Jesus Christ, not no fairy tale in a book, not no fag creator, no fag creator that they created in a book. John 19, 25 through 27, Jesus admit that he was a homosexual. Now, how are you going to follow a book that white people, wrote? even male chauvinists, I'm going to tell y'all something. This is a secret. I'm going to let the, the, the woman's womb, the pussy, the woman, her pussy is called the matrix inside of the Bible. When we look at Neo, we look at the first matrix. Neo, went to come out the matrix, he had to be reborn again. So he was in a fetal position in a placenta. That they created. And he came down the birth canal. Into that maritime law system. So when you go to uh, Exodus. And they start talking about killing the firstborn. And they was taking it from somebody. They were not taking it from Pharaoh. They was taking it from the black woman. Her firstborn. You got to know your motherfucking importance. See, y'all want to read the wrong shit out of the Bible. These motherfucking male chauvinist, punk ass, gay men who wrote the Bible, the Pizzo family, the Pizzo family, Google this shit. They was male, homosexual, murder, killer. So it's all a male chauvinist book. And when they talking about taking the firstborn, they was talking about taking it from the black woman. They didn't give a fuck. What, what, what to say? They didn't care if you was a flock. They didn't care if it was the herd. Or man, they was taking, well, male, he said male, they was taking the first born from the woman, from the womb. The matrix mean the womb. And if you can't understand that and know that shit, that this is against you, these people, these religions that you call American is against you. If you don't know that shit, you are part of the problem. You are why we are fucked up right now to this day because your mindset is still stuck in a slave mentality. You can't see greatness in yourself or your children. You only hope that greatness is there. Do you understand what I'm saying? You only hope that greatness is there. 
wow. When I see my kids, I know it's there. So that's why I talk shit to them. That's why I go off on their little monkey asses. You can do better, motherfucker. <laughs> you can do so much motherfucking better. But since you want to be stuck in a slave man mentality, I will become your enemy. I will. As a father, I'll become your enemy. Because I'm going to push you so hard, I'm going to make sure, goddamn it, you're going to go, that nigga, fuck him. Fuck that motherfucker, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> I'm going to encourage you to do your best because I don't believe you can do it. Because you think that you you got some, some magical nigga in the sky doing tricks or dictating your life instead of getting out here getting this shit your own. Your mama done taught you how to be a punk bitch. And that's for real. Because a real man, got, he'll get his own. He ain't worried about mama buying no motherfucking shoes. He ain't worried about mama buying no clothes and no shit. He going out there and get it his own. When I was seven years fucking old, I was out there getting my own money. I had $30, $40 in my motherfucking pocket. Easy. Because I went out and got my own shit. But if your mama been raised a punk bitch, I can't do it. I got to wait on the Lord. Jesus going to help me. I challenge you. I challenge you to go out there and create your own fucking jobs. I'm talking about create your own network. What makes you ashamed of being black? Why you put all this other fictitious shit on your body to make you look like you ain't black? You got this fake ass hair, fake ass complexion, fake booties, fake titties. The pussy don't even smell real. When you, you got so much uh, Victoria's Secrets <laughs> down there, you don't even you can't even smell it. You don't even know what real pussy smell like no more because women so fake. And that's real shit. So I challenge you to go out and do something. Go out and build your own fucking business. I don't care what you sell. You can sell pussy. If that's your business, sell a motherfucker and be great at it. You see what I'm saying? But don't sit up here and just wait on somebody to give you something. The fuck you waiting for? What, what makes you think that some God is, is, is just making sure that you're going to have whatever you need at the right time? I challenge, I challenge any, any of y'all, man. Step out there on that on that limb. It took me to leave a fucking mansion to come homeless. Listen to what I'm saying. Leaving a mansion to become homeless to believe in what I believe in. I could have slept in 13 bedrooms. I could have went and pissed and shit in 16 bathrooms. Could have parted by myself. Had a full club, a stripper pole, and everything else. 56 acres. But I believed in myself so much that I said, no, nah, I'm going to go to L.A. And I'm going to do this shit. I'm going to become, I'm going I'm I'm to be on TV. I'm going to get my kids on. Everything that I said I was going to do at 10 years old, I said, I'm going to do it out here. I couldn't do certain things like draw pictures for Michael Jackson and Prince because they murdered them. That was a dream that, that's, that was taken away from me. Michael Jackson was the first person that I knew. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be an artist. And the dream that I had for myself that I was going to grow up and draw a picture for Michael Jackson. Why well, I didn't do Michael Jackson, y'all. I did Stevie Wonder. And I could tell you, man, that was the most important. Right, but I, it was so important for me he just didn't know everybody. It motherfucker was smoking weed around me. It was the first time I ever didn't smoke weed. The person who had the house was smoking weed. She was like, you all right? Are we cool? I was like, yeah, I'm all right. You know, she thought I was tripping off her smoking weed. I wasn't tripping off her smoking weed. Shit, I smoked weed, but I was so nervous. The dream came true. I was waiting on the, this, this dream to come true that I actually, you know, drew something for somebody that I admired in my life. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and give it to them. Not charge them. Give it to them. The person who commended me to, uh, to do this, I felt like it was down there in insult. I'm like, I don't want no motherfucking money. She was like, no, I got to pay you. I was like, no, I don't want no money. This is an honor. I don't want no money for this. If you want to pay for something, go buy the material. Give me the money for the materials. $37. But what I'm telling you, when you build yourself a brand, things like that, that sacrificing that I did gets me to the point of co completing accomplishing the goals I set out as a little child. To this day, when I was a little child going to church and I was reading the Bible and I seen how wicked the Bible was, I told myself, I'm going to find the truth out about this Bible and I'm going to tell everybody about it. So when I break this shit down about the Bible, I'm saying it because a little kid knew as a little kid, he knew something was wrong with this shit. And look at the effects that it has on my people. So now I'm old enough to comprehend exactly the purpose of that book. And I tell my people, hey, man, you got to overcome that dumb ass shit. You are so greater than what a motherfucker told you you are in a book. That some nigga looking over you while you doing. You know what? I talk to that nigga when I get to him. I talk to that motherfucker when I get to him. I ain't worried about no motherfucking God worried about what the fuck I'm doing down here. If I'm doing right or doing right by him or uh, making sure. Man, man, fuck him. Fuck God. This nigga ain't coming and doing shit for me. My God was my mother. My God was my father. Not no hunky named Jesus. Not no hunky named God. Inside of a book. That is not my parents. That's not my creator. And we take away from our parents when we say dumb ass shit like that. How you think a man going to really respect a woman when you sitting up there calling your father some other nigga that you probably fantasize having sex with? And matter of fact, you call his name out when the man is giving you good dick. Oh, God, Jesus, Lord. Oh, <laughs> that's what you do. But the man is giving you the dick. You calling out Jesus name, God, that tells you right there how fucked up and crazy that you really are. So, like I said, as a little kid, I was a little kid and this was my journey and I accomplished shit and I'm here accomplishing it still to this day. So, again, I challenge any of y'all to create within America, but without Americans. I challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge you. Now, if I get blocked because I said you need to create within America, but without Americans. And they want to block me for that, saying I'm being what you call it, unethical or uh, uh, the, it goes against Facebook standards. Well, Facebook ain't got no standards. They never did. White people ain't never had a standards. Anytime they are sitting shit for sexual purpose, that's not that's not a standard. Anytime they have sex with little kids, anytime they justify uh, pedophilia, rape, murder, and make a law to protect them from doing that, I mean, from getting in trouble for doing that, y'all never had morals. And this is what we better understand. They never had morals. They only make laws. Black people got morals. White people got laws. <laughs> Think about that. Laws are to be enforced. Morals is something natural that happens that you think before you even do anything. A white person will have sex with a dog. Move it. You know, morals is something that comes from you within. A law is something that a white man had to create just so he can get away with his crime. And keep you niggas from doing the crime. Or from, 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 yeah. No shit, now he profits off of you doing the crime. That too. He creates a crime. 
for you to do. Yeah. It creates a such, law to say that it's a crime. Such as marijuana. And a punishment to go with it. The prime example is marijuana. <clears throat> marijuana has what to do with it. Never been illegal. The only thing that made marijuana illegal was them putting it on the docket to be voted upon. And they never voted. And by you using it in something that it never been voted on, it's that made illegal. Because they have not been voted for yes or no. And that's a cold game. That's a cold game when you can sit there and basically get in trouble for some shit that is a plant. A plant. Just a bullshit ass plant. And yeah. Cat Williams that just so happened to get you high when you heat it up. That's it. It's just a plant that just so happened to get you high when it burns. And you would hit. But it has all these medications. That's uh, uh, that's 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 one of the challenges. I, I that's I challenge some I challenge black people to open up some dispensaries. Oh yeah, when is our thing next Friday, right? Yeah. We go into a seminar. We go into a, a a seminar on how to open up a dispensary. I challenge you black people to learn how to open up your own dispensary. They have in seminars out here in LA, uh California, around, around yeah. California. Yeah. Um to, to learn how to open up dispensaries. All you gangbangers, you drug selling motherfucking niggas. Why don't you take that money and open up a dispensary? You can actually open up a dispensary legally now. I think you can employ felons too. Yeah. Yeah. So you can employ yeah, felons. Motherfucking criteria that you have to be a felon. Yeah, on certain of them. Yeah, certain ones. You have to be a, like a convicted. No, I'm saying I would, I would create a thing where like I would only hire felons. Well, well, see, that's the for thing everything. that. Uh, so for a lot of the positions, you know, you could be a felon. That was I something. I would look for people who are felons. Nipsey was doing, they say, you know what I'm saying, that he was hiring the felons, you know what I'm saying, which is cool. We also have here in L.A., uh, what's that look? Uh the Home kitchen, yeah, the hip, the homeboy industry, the Latino uh, brother, man, he sat there and uh, he got like a kitchen, nah, right? he have a cafe, cafe, he have a chips and salsa line yeah. that sold at stores. Uh, they have a uh, a recycling computer and technology parts garage. Yeah, they got all uh, type of shit, bro. So what I'm saying is, out here, yeah. I don't know if y'all really own that shit or whatever, but. I haven't ever went there because their cafe hours are so crazy, but we probably should try one day and we can go to Chinatown right there. Yeah. You know, uh, that's something that we just have to start, you know, looking into, man. Uh, we so busy, like I said, going to work for somebody else. Why don't yeah, you create right. your own job? I mean, before I took over the cafe, my thought was is making a party planning business where I can make great parties for a hun under a hundred dollars, like the decorate, you know how like the decorations, mm -hmm. the plates, and all of that, you know, little doodads. I can do as much as I can for a hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, that's something you don't have to know how to be. Well, I guess you have to be a little bit creative, but you know. For people who are creative, try to make a party planning business for mine was going to be like parties on a budget, right? right? So people right. can, you know, you have a little kid, you only got about a hundred bucks. Shit, I can put you together a little something, something without the cost of the cake and the food. All the decorations of party games, party favors and all of that stuff. Yeah, so you got to start creating. You got to. The thing is, in order to create, in order to be great, you have to create. 
you're not just great by just sitting on your ass. You're not great just walking around amongst the people just knowing you. My famous quote that I have, what happened to our shirts? She, she's inboxed, I mean, uh, hit me up a couple of times. The funny part is she came on Wednesday when we were closed for an hour. Uh, yeah, hit me up. Uh, okay. She said what? probably this week. Okay. She had to like pre-order some supplies and... Well, one of my, I told her it was in a rush. Yeah. My, my famous quote that I have that I created, you know what I'm saying? I may not achieve my great expectations, but I'm famous amongst the ones who knew me. See, that's why we should chalkboard paint the restaurant so we can just write quotes around. You know. People take pictures of those. Hey, beautiful. How you doing? I got a challenge for you today. And it's a challenge. But this might this challenge might take you from one to five years to be great at it. But I challenge you, I challenge you to start a black business, anything, whether if it's selling your hair, whether if it's selling makeup, lipstick, or anything. I challenge you. I challenge you to take one hundred and ten percent of your time and put it into what you believe your product or who you are and what you do and push it hard for three whole good years. And once you start seeing the, 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 the growth, you either can step off or go back to work for a motherfucker or work for yourself. But I challenge you to create something in America without Americans. That's what we was on when we was a little kid. Huh? You have to have, America. Okay, check America. this out. If that was the case, did we have to have uh, Americans when we started breakdancing? No, what I'm saying is, yeah, well, you need somebody who manufactured cardboard. Not really. Not really. We, we didn't have to spend. Throwing away cardboard. No, you go in that motherfucker and you find it. Whatever you're doing, what I'm saying is, I challenge. It's just a challenge. You see what I'm saying? And what I'm talking about is not going out and get a loan. Don't go get no loan from no bank. That's America. Oh, I'm not yeah, oh. I'm not saying don't have some of your friends that may be Caucasian. <laughs> right. They may be uh Asian that's Caucasian. <laughs> what I'm saying is America. What I'm telling you don't go get no damn loan from a bank. I'm telling you create from what you and your friends come up with. You see what I'm saying? You and your buddy, y'all might have a Microsoft uh, plan. Y'all might have a Nintendo plan. You might have a Sega Genesis plan. But whatever you do, y'all create it and stick with it and stay with that motherfucker for three whole years. Don't worry about goddamn me uh, with Tom and Billy and, 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 and uh, Gucci and Naka doing. Take that shit what you got, that, that truth and believe knowing that you so fucking great and build something. It can be a marijuana store. It can be a, a cigarette store. It can be a toenail store. It could be whatever you want, but just push it three hearts. And I know, goddamn me, I, I didn't have businesses before. I didn't have shit that failed. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have shit that, what, you know. I want to call it. I, well, I'm saying like it just didn't grow as I seen it. You know what I'm saying? You know, we actually can see some shit now. Like, yeah, this is how, you know, when people come in and correct, congratulating that, you know, you're doing a great job. You know, the place is turned around. I haven't been here years and it looks different, but you know what? The food still tastes the same. And you know what? The, the hospitality is still great. You know, shit like that. You know, that's that's when you know you're growing and you're doing something positive when the community come and eat every day. When the community come I've to your spot. Tell me thank you. Yeah. They told me thank you for taking the challenge to keep it alive. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. Because he these I'm challenging people today. I'm challenging y'all. All of y'all that's on here or whatever, y'all looking, man. I challenge you today. I challenge you to be great. I challenge you to create something within America, but without Americans. 
Shit, I feel like Nipsey Hussle. A motherfucker was failing as a restaurant and was like, fuck it, you want to buy yeah. it then? Yeah. <laughs> Hey. You know, these people, y'all got to understand that what his brother said, man. These people wanted Nipsey and Nada, and they was putting the, the pressure. The district attorney. Yes, nigga. the district attorney put the pressure on that boy. 30 days notice on him, not because he failed to pay rent. Not, not that. because of anything. Mm -mm. And the lot owner is like, shit, this nigga, I wasn't even making money till this nigga yeah. came. I didn't make money. It was vacant. Wasn't nobody coming up here until. For years. So, that's the cold thing about, that's the irony. So, the challenge I'm telling y'all today, man, take that challenge. Challenge them people that don't believe in you, that don't believe in your people. That's how he became the Master Burger's boss. Yes. Yeah. You know? That's some G shit right there. Challenge the motherfuckers who don't want to right see there. you do it. Man, that's the most Go against them odds. Because I could just imagine how that shit used to feel when a motherfucker be kicking you off the shit. And in your head, you like, nigga, one day I'm going to be your boss, nigga. And everybody laughing at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was like, man, one day I'm going to own this motherfucker right here. And everybody laughing. Ah, nigga, you stupid. You black Chinese. Man, that, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you know, I'm going to still try. You know what I mean? Like. On the real side, I know that's a cold piece where you go to the motherfucker who hated you half of your life and be like, here, nigga, I'm your boss, nigga. Right. So. Who used to do you dirty. Who used to call the police on you. Who used to try to get you beat up and shot, nigga. Pay me my rent. Or the motherfuckers just have to bask in his misery. Yeah. By seeing you doing so great. That is a wonderful I thing. Know he was like, you little Fucker, nobody killed you. You know, now I'm sure he doesn't feel like that. You know, he probably was like, wow, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, you know. <laughs> and I'm sure it really hurt him a lot to see that Nipsey wasn't there. Because, like, you know, Nipsey didn't treat him bad or nothing. He just was like, hey, my niggas is going to be here now, nigga. I know on this shit. Yeah. Yeah. So just imagine, imagine, thing, imagine a district attorney, goddamn me. Sat there and oh, was. My. That's why they kept kicking this shit in. Mm -hmm. Because they, he bought the lot. So then now let's just keep on kicking them in. Mm -hmm. Trying to hurt him. Yep. Trying to get a gang injunction. You know. <laughs> Trying to get a gang injunction. That's it. So, you know, defeating all the odds, defeating all his odds, and it still wasn't good enough. That's why I said what I said when that damn detective was in there yesterday. Because after all the shit that he climbed over and still oh, that came out good. Yeah, I know he don't be tripping, but he know uh, he's he's a beacon of goddamn me logic. Yeah. That's why I did well, that. Well what I what the thing is is because they're having a non police opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why I be checking them on certain people on how they have an opinion of black people or how they have an opinion of gang members yeah. or whatever. Like, wait a minute, hold up. You mean you know, to tell they me? They look at me thinking like, oh, not her. Oh, no, me too, honey. Well, the, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, they actually, you know, have to, they never heard that side. You listen, when you hear shit so much like Christians, Jesus, 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 right. Jesus, and you unconsciously say Jesus. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When, even when you try, you stop trying to say it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you heard it so much. So mm -hmm. what they heard was niggas, 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 niggas for so long. But when a real nigga come and tell you how he feel on this side, you really can't say nothing. Because right. now you got the nigga perspective of it. And now you got to put your child in that situation or your family members or something. If it was happening to your family, man, how would you feel? Now you got to make white people feel empathy. Because they don't know empathy. They don't have it by nature. You got to make white people feel empathy. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not sympathy, but empathy. You got to make them. So therefore, when you do that, then they bow down and they feel shameful because they didn't even know that knowledge. They pretend that they know everything, but they didn't know that part. And when they know that, they feel shame and they got to bow their head. They got to pay respect. That's what happened yesterday. A little punk ass motherfucker. I've been catching this bitch ass. The motherfucker sped at my feet. I sped back at the motherfucker's feet, right? So yesterday he was riding his motherfucker bike 
and the motherfucker spat at my feet while he was rocking, man, I, I could have knocked that nigga head back to St. Louis or Guatemala or Honduras, wherever the fuck that motherfucker from. I could have fucked him up, and I was about to, but something stopped me. Nipsey stopped me or something because I was just walking from Nipsey shit, and I was about to fuck this punk ass motherfucker up. But I checked him so bad. I made him feel so much of shit in front of all the, his Latino friends and families or whatever the fuck that was around. I made him feel fucking bad and respect me right there and say it over and over. <laughs> don't you respect me? Do you respect me? Because if you don't, I'm going to whoop your ass. And you think he didn't? <laughs> I respect you. I respect you. You better. Because if you don't, motherfucker, we, I'm finna beat your motherfucking ass right here. Don't you ever spit at my motherfucking feet. You below me, motherfucker. I will show you a motherfucking God. I'll beat your motherfucking ass. So, yeah, nothing happened last night, right? Except for that one shooting. Right? Yeah. See, they get all drugged up and shit. And they come in the back of my motherfucking apartment. And they be playing music and shit, so one night, I caught this motherfucker, he th two or three o'clock in the morning, you playing that loud, way too loud, playing loud ass music, I told him cut it out, he gonna turn it up even more, so I went out there with my motherfucking machete, and I was finna cut his motherfucking ass up, and they motherfucker cut it down, so he felt some type of way every time that he see me, that he can't, he can't bully me or some shit, because I made him feel like a little bitch, you the drug addict, you the one that's on drugs, you come in and violate other people's shit. So you know what? I checked your bitch ass. I wasn't wrong for that. And if you got a problem with any day, we can handle that. But you ain't finna drive past me or ride past me or walk past. Or I walk past and you gonna spit at my feet. I beat your motherfucking ass, boy. They will have a, they will have a motherfucking bucket going around for your ass. Trying to get you in, uh, cremated. I don't play games with people like that. And everybody that was around looking at that, them motherfuckers didn't say shit. They better not have. I don't play games like that. I would kill for mine. I would die for mine. And that day I was coming, I was at peace. Yesterday I was so at peace. And that motherfucker sped at my feet. 5150 clicked in. Right? Boy, I, I swear to God, I was finna take his head off. I don't know what stopped me. Maybe because McDonald's got cameras. <laughs> oh, <laughs> everywhere. Maybe McDonald's got cameras because I was gonna knock his ass clean the fuck out. Oh, McDonald's do have cameras. But something stopped me. I was in mid swing. I swear to God, I was in mid swing. And about time that motherfucker got this close to his face, he looked in the in the mirror. The window uh -huh. and did like that. Right. Cause I was some just stopped me. Cause I was in mid swing. I couldn't take it. You know, you know how I get mad? <laughs> I couldn't take it. And I ran behind that motherfucker so fast he didn't even know. I was behind him before I even know. Cause I'm a type of nigga, I wanna fight you head up. I ain't gonna hit you behind your back, nigga. I wanna fight you straight up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I give bitch ass niggas the benefit of doubt like that. And I think that's a problem with us real niggas out here. We two motherfucker 100 instead of giving these bitch ass niggas the same benefit of the doubt uh, uh, of knowing that they bitch ass niggas. We, we, we real niggas give fake bitch ass niggas too much of a 100. That shit, that 100, everybody ain't 100. Yep. Everybody ain't 100. And real niggas give bitch ass niggas that same motherfucking uh, percentage and we lose, homie. We lose. We that's how Nipsey got shot because he thought the nigga was one hundred. Because he was one hundred. He said no. He thought the nigga meant no. He knew what understood what no meant, which means no. Well, no we should have been like, hey, once he said that shit, hey, cuz go get my go get my motherfucking strap. Right. That's what he should have did. That nigga left off or whatever. Let's just go get my strap just in case this nigga come back. We too busy worrying about another nigga being 100 like you is. You told the nigga off 100. You thought the nigga was going to keep that motherfucking shit in like 100. And it don't happen like that with bitch ass niggas. Bitch ass niggas go plot. Go sit in the corner cry and shit like that. And get mad want to hurt you. Good morning baby. You know what I'm saying? That's what bitch ass niggas do. And we all know that. Kiki.
That's what bitch ass niggas do. King, get up. Scary. Scary. I told her them motherfucking wigs and shit be scaring me. I be thinking it's some shit right there. You know, we we can't get up, King. Now we too busy of trying to give the benefit of doubt. Of everybody being 100. Everybody ain't 100. It's some damn uh, 3% ass bitches out here. 3% ass niggas out here. They don't never keep it 100. They ain't even close to 100. And we sit up there and give the 100 niggas, the real motherfuckers that's 100, we give these motherfuckers too much of the benefit of the doubt. And we let these motherfuckers come up under us. Yeah, take the moves. We let them motherfuckers come up under, under us and we vulnerable now because now we got the enemy under us. We supposed to push them motherfuckers way the fuck back. Get the fuck some stupid motherfucker tomorrow. Uh uh mm. keep your enemies close and your friends closer or whatever the fuck. Yeah, nah. yeah. Uh vice versa, whatever that shit is. I don't live by that shit. Isn't it keep your friends close and your enemies closer? That, nah, that, it, it, no, it's what probably trying that. trying to say is that you got to watch your enemies, but you got to watch your friends, too. Yeah, but I watch every motherfucker. Exactly. Body. That's the point of the saying. Guess, <laughs> that's, we, we too busy, goddamn it. I even watch, I even watch family. You got to watch family, too. You know, uh, fam, family will fuck you over, too, so... With that being said, you know what I'm saying? It don't make sense to me when you're watching your friends and watching your enemies closer or, you know, keeping them closer to you. Because once you allow somebody up under you, no matter what, you're vulnerable. So we can't just be letting motherfuckers say, oh, nigga, it's 100 with me. It's 100 with me. And the motherfucker double back and come shoot you. That's how I got shot, child. The second time, a bitch ass nigga. Lamar King, a bitch ass nigga. He couldn't fight me one on one. He seen me knock out his partner right on the side. Him and his partner walking together. I knocked his friend out like bam. And I looked at him. I said, "Bitch ass nigga, now what's up with you?" So if a nigga already know that I'm, I got the power to keep to knock a nigga out, and he with you with the nigga I knocked out. I'm breaking away from teachers and everything, trying to give you the chance to come get knocked the fuck out. Since y'all crips, I man, I knocked that nigga out. And wait, get the fuck off me. I'm breaking out of the teachers. Teachers grab me. Boom. <laughs> bitch ass nigga, come on with that shit. And I'm telling you, a bitch ass nigga shot me. Later on, years later, because the nigga already seen me knock one of his homeboys out. Right with the homeboy that he was walking with. The nigga ain't gonna keep it 100. They know you keep it 100. You got the punch. I had a gun on me that night I got shot. I still threw my guards up at a bitch ass nigga. Now, what if I would have pulled out that thing on this bitch ass? He'd have ran. I'd have got, I'd have shot him. He'd have probably been dead. The police would have shot and killed me because the whole time the police was sitting there laying to kill me that night. Not only the Crips was trying to plot to kill me, the police too. So that's why, you know, especially back in the day, man, that's why it was hard to be a blood. These little bitch ass niggas today now, they put on a red outfit and put on some bandanas talking about, oh yeah, I'm a blood. That ain't no more what a blood is, nigga. You couldn't even imagine what bloods had to go through just to live out in my fucking society. When you're in a sea of crips, now it's like a goddamn me blood pool. <laughs> you know, everybody want to be bloods. Well, you got to be a tough motherfucker, a real one. A real one? You can't be afraid to not get knocked out or fighting another motherfucker or fighting a crowd of people. That's something that you just got to have to deal with. But at the end of the day, man, uh, I challenge y'all. I challenge y'all to create something. I don't care what it is. It can be inside of your house. You can create some type of small business where other people come in and... and, and Merching with you, you know, exchanging, you know, goods and currency, you know what I'm saying? Do something, start creating so it can grow within five, from three to five years, man. You be in your own establishment within the community selling whatever you started selling 
inside of the community to everybody where you have a pay, a place, a business. That's how the community is going to grow. That's the only way the community is going to grow because at the end of the day, if we're not putting back into the communities where people who have money that's rich and from those communities don't want to come back because the people is not putting back in the com community. Think about this. You always want somebody to come back to put money in the community. Where is the people in the community putting the money, goddamn me, back into the community? If you want somebody to come back, give back, you must give while you're there. Stop taking. Some of these niggas can't even walk on the streets that they used to come up on now because, goddamn me, it's so bad. You done took so much from the motherfucking neighborhood, it's not even a hood no more. I mean, it's not a neighborhood no more, it's just a hood. Anytime a hood you put over your head, <laughs> just cover it up. You're trying to do something sneaky and scandalous. <laughs> a hood is bad, you know? You know? When they said, look at them hoods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look at them hoods. You know, them robbing hoods. Okay? Think about this shit. So I challenge y'all, man. I challenge y'all to go out there and create a job. Within America, but without Americans. <laughs>